Hey, what's going on, guys? I used to do here for another video. Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to light and render some landscape in Cinema 4D and Octane. So, um, yeah, let's get started. So, for this tutorial, I'm not going to be creating the actual landscape. That is available for download in the description, so you guys can just uh, load that up and get started right with the um, lighting and rendering. So, how you're going to use, so in the description, there will be two uh, files in a mega.nz link. One will be the texture and one will be the height map. So I'll show you how to use those. So you want to go into your Create, Shader, C4D Octane, Octane Material. And we're going to go to the Diffuse here. <clears throat> so we'll start by loading in the texture. It'll be right there. You know, looks like a texture. Um, these are all in 8K, by the way. So, you know, you might need a little bit of RAM or stuff to render this. Um, you may have to go into, like, Paint 3D and decrease the resolution if your computer really can't handle it. But, you know, I like high quality. So we're going to be running with this for now. Um, you can hit into your displacement here, and this is how we're going to be making the actual um, terrain, the geometry. Now, while I could use a Cinema 4D displacer found here, um, it would be more efficient to just use um, the Add Displacement here in Octane. Um, it'll render faster as well as just having better quality overall. So in the displacement here, for the texture, I'm going to click here, and I'm going to choose the height map, as I said before, available for download in the description below. I'm going to open up the height map. Now, level of details. So you could go all the way up here, um, as high as Octane supports, because the texture is 8K. For now, though, I think we'll just stick with 4K, because, um, you know, I want it to render quickly while I'm doing the tutorial. But for a final render, probably setting it up to 8K would look best. And amount, I think we'll do about uh, 100, is a pretty decent amount. <clears throat> so uh, we'll leave this here. I don't think we're going to be changing this too much more, maybe a little bit. Um, but eh, we'll leave it like that for now. Now, we're going to be um, adding the actual plane, which will be displaced by Octane. So go to your objects here, plane. Width segments, one. Height segments, one. Doesn't matter. We're not using Cinema 4D displacement. We're using Octane displacement. So uh, the actual segments here in Cinema 4D don't really matter. All right, drag that up. And we can just leave it, like, right there. Drag on our material. Might take a second. It's quite a large texture here. But um, you can see in Cinema 4D, it's not uh, very displaced. But if we just give it a second here to render, or to um, load into memory, rather. Let's just see here. Still loading, I guess. Yeah, it's quite a large uh, texture, so. There we go. Just load it in. All right. Now, um, we're going to start the uh, render. <clears throat> And just take a quick look at it so I can show you guys. Yeah, so it's a kind of nice little mountain here with some snow and some erosion. Nothing too detailed, but, uh, you know, it should serve our purposes. So I think it would like a top view of this kind of, you know, a top sort of angle. You can, you know, put this at any angle you want. And I'll just put the angle. Yeah, I'll do it like that. And I'll grab an octane camera there. You know what? I'll go from two different angles. I'll put one octane camera there. And then one here. Make it sort of like framed a little more to the side there. Just like that. All right. And we'll grab another Octane camera. Now we can go into both of these and um, we'll just look at different views, different angles. It should be pretty all right. Okay. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating the actual kind of ambient light, the environment, the color of the shadows. Um, and this is just going to be a blue sky. I'm not going to be doing any clouds right now because it's more simple with Octane's built-in Octane Daylight, which we'll be using here. You go to your Objects, Lights, Octane Daylight. It's more simple to not do any clouds or anything. Uh, just set the power to maybe 0.7 or something. And the sun color, we're going to set that to a completely blue. Now, obviously, this is more of a realistic daylight model, perhaps. But I'm going for maybe a kind of artistic looking, maybe, render now. Depending on what you guys are doing, you might want to use a custom HDRI. But if you know... If you're going to do that, you probably know what you're doing with the um, Octane HDRI environment as well. So we'll just use an Octane Sky because it's built in and you guys don't need to download anything else. Okay, enough talking. So we have this here. Now, we're going to go to your objects again, lights. And I'm going to be using an Octane Area Light to do my sort of uh, spotlighting here. And I'm just going to use this as the sunlight kind of. So I'm going to position it a little farther away maybe. Because we don't want quite as harsh shadows. So position a little farther away. Move it up, and maybe move it uh, over a bit. And we're going to rotate it just towards the landscape. 
If you want to, you can use an octane targeted area light to make this a little easier, but I'll just do this for now. Okay, move it back a little bit more maybe. Um, the shadows are quite harsh, but I think it looks all right. It's kind of what I want. Now we set down the, oh, I want the power, so power's all right. Now we want to bring down the temperature here. And this will change the color, lower temperatures mean more of a kind of yellow tint, all the way to a red. Higher temperatures mean more of a blue tint, so you can be using kind of orangey, uh, orangey temperature here. There we go. Looks all right. Um, but it doesn't look super, like, nice if we look at it here from on top, from the side to on top, whatever. It looks okay, but it's just that the light is just falling too linearly onto the actual surface itself. So we want more of kind of random, not randomness maybe, but we want it to feel more like there are other mountains around this one surrounding it that are leaving a shadow on it. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to grab a plane, and I'm going to use this to kind of obscure a part of the sunlight and maybe make it, um, you know, a little bit of a shadow. So I'm just going to grab this, rotate it, and it's just sort of going to be like kind of closer to the landscape and a little bit make a bit of a shadow. So there we go. Have a look here. That looks pretty nice. Maybe a little bit less linear and a little bit more um, natural. You know, even this is, this plane is just a plane. You know, if we really want it to be good, we could, uh, or really want it to be more accurate, we could use a landscape here in place of this. For now, though, I think this is uh, just fine. You can see the line here. It's a bit harsh, but, you know, I'm sure you guys can figure that out on your own if you're doing some kind of more complex render. So we have this here. I think we're going to change the color a little bit or the temperature. Make it a bit um, more like that. And for my second camera angle, I'm just going to increase the size that... Yeah, you know, I think that looks nice, kind of softly falling onto this here and a little bit more harsh there. Uh, you can see we can see a bit of black here on the side. Probably don't want that. Maybe reposition our camera angle just so we uh, eliminate that sort of uh, black at the background because it doesn't really fit. <clears throat> okay, so once we have this here, now this looks okay. And you can probably leave it like this and be fine and forget about it. But I would like to um, go a little further and add some atmospheric haze because, you know, we're up in the mountains and it'll probably be a little bit foggy, or at least, you know, not perfectly clear vision. So for this, I'm going to grab an object, Octane Fog Volume. I'm going to drag this up here by the mountain. Set the voxel size up to 30. Um, and I should set it up to like 45. And voxel size is not really useful because we're not like making clouds or anything. We're just kind of making one solid volume. So voxel size, the higher it is, the lower quality it'll be if you have like clouds. But we're not doing that again, as I said, so it doesn't matter. Okay, we're going to drag up the size here, make it a little bit wider, quite a bit wider probably. Um, decrease the, or sorry, increase the height a little bit. Let's see if I get a different view maybe. Increase the height a little. And finally go for the, um, the depth or whatever you want to call that. I'm going to scale that up a little bit. Okay, now it's a pretty big volume here. And we don't need to see it in the actual viewport, so we can go to our volume and just um, untick the, uh, or just click the, little top uh, circle here uh, twice to disable viewport um, looking at it from the viewport okay so we have it like this our render is completely black what do we do well medium and we need to obviously just decrease the density now you know already this looks like okay but when you're rendering volumes as a simple rule of thumb you should always be using the path tracing kernel so Go to our Octane, Octane Settings, Direct Lighting, Path Tracing. Um, it just will always make it look better. Uh, GI Clamp, we set that to 1. Filter Size 1. And we're going to need to change the uh, settings a little more here in the volume. But uh, set that, that. Um, max, okay, Parallel Samples, Max Tile Samples. We'll just stress your graphics card harder. If you want that, then, you know, render faster. For now, I'm recording, so I'm just going to leave this, you know, halfway. It doesn't matter. Settings, set render priority, you can always set that to high. Uh, it won't really matter. I'm just gonna make it so that my second graphics card is used for rendering just because I'm recording. As I've said already, I'm recording, so I don't want to, um, to make the actual recording lag. So we're just gonna leave that on my second one because I'm recording on the primary one. Anyway, most of you guys probably only have one, so just set it, enable all these, and priority high. Okay, enough with the render settings. Now, for the volume, um, the reason it's darkened, the image, is for two reasons. The volume, obviously, and the fact that the light isn't really bright enough. Um, so we're going to have to increase this probably a little more. 
And as we increase that light, let me just do it so it looks like that nice, pretty nice. Um, we also need to increase the octane daylight as well, proportionally. So it looks a little more, you know, natural. Um, 1.6, 4. just kind of tweak this until it looks nice. It's not like a perfect value that will work for everything, you know, just tweak it for your specific scene. Um, we have that. We're going to go into our volume here. Now we're going to make it a little different. So the absorption scattering. Okay, so first I'll talk density. That's just how thick the fog, haze, whatever you want to call it is. You know, maybe turn it up a little more. Ah, it's fine like that. Um, volume step length. This is the quality of the actual render. The lower this is, the longer it'll take to render, but also the quality of the volumes will be um, better. I mean, like if you are really close to two objects, it'll be easier to tell which one is, you know, closer depending on how thick the fog is. It's, uh, it's just a quality slider. Just think of it that way. Don't um, try and make it too complicated for yourself. Um, we're just going to set it to one, maybe. And it'll take a little bit longer to render, but it's fine, you know. Um, so absorption, you know, you look up at the sky and it's blue. And even though it's not really blue, it's actually the sunlight scattering it. For the sake of this, we're just going to use um, a blue here. And even though in the real world it's not quite this simple, uh, we'll just use a kind of blue color here. And I find that using kind of light blues more usually work a little bit better. Something like that. It'll be fine. Uh, you can see it'll make the image quite a bit bluer. Maybe actually decrease the saturation there a little bit more. Yeah. There we go. Right to your volume. Volume medium. Scattering. And we're going to set that to a sort of bluish as well. And I notice the whole image will get quite a bit bluer. And, you know, you might want that. You might not. Uh, I'm going to go to my light here, my octane light, and I'm just going to make it a little more orange. You know, there we go. Looking pretty nice already. If you would like to make it a little more, um, a little nicer, you could add some depth of field. Uh, the way you do that is you click on your camera here. You uh, increase your aperture. Maybe we'll try quite a bit. Oh, that's too much. I'll try not a good amount here. And then you get a, just set the focus, disable autofocus with volumes, and then just increase the focal depth here. Just have a look. Maybe we need a little more focal depth. So that's 100, 200. There we go. Let's have a look here. Okay, maybe that's not good enough. I'll just do that. Obviously, you'd have to tweak this, um, make, look, make it look good. It kind of focuses on that part of the mountain. And um, it looks pretty good. If you would like to add a little more to it, this isn't really adding realism. This is more like the artistic side. You can go to your post settings here and enable. Uh, maybe add a little bit of bloom. Now, bloom isn't like super realistic in all scenarios, um, but it might make it look a little better. Just like that. Um, if you're on Octane 4, you are actually able to use a custom LUT. So LUT to file name. I'm going to grab one here from... Some that I have downloaded. You can just find these online. Just search like free LUT pack. Or st LUT stands for lookup table. And it's just a color, color um, auto color correcting. You can just load right into Octane. You know, you can see here, this one looks pretty nice. I'll uh, show you the LUT strength. Controls quite significantly the saturation, maybe kind of pop depth of our sort of landscape. And there are many uh, um, options here. You know, maybe when you make your texture in whatever program you made it in, um, you know, for your texture here. You can maybe change the saturation, the way the texture kind of is colored to change the render a little bit. Do more advanced texturing techniques in Octane. Maybe I'll go over more landscape texturing methods in another video. But for now, this was just kind of a more lighting and um, rendering sort of oriented tutorial. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I know I haven't uploaded for a while. I've just been busy with other things and I haven't really been sure what to upload on my channel. But I thought this would be pretty um, good for you guys. So um, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.